Dear participants and colleagues, I will now present for about 10 minutes on global management of coconut diversity conserve ex situ. Ex situ means conservation out of farmer's field into large field or lab gene banks usually owned by national institutions involved in agriculture. We will first make an overview presentation to show how coconut varieties are conserved. We will then explain how, thanks to the global strategy of the Cogent Network, we have collectively tried to organize and coordinate, with 28 different countries, the conservation of coconut diversity. We will then insist on the importance of variety catalogues, which are the best way to inform everyone about the extraordinary diversity of varieties, and to help farmers and gardeners recognize and choose among these varieties. We will conclude with a quick review and a prospective analysis of coconut ex situ conservation, indicating how the number of varieties should evolve over the coming decades. The global area planted with coconut palms is about 12 million hectares. The global area of coconut gene bank ex situ conservation is about only 1,000 hectares, so, about 0,008% of the total area. Most of coconut diversity is obviously managed and conserved by farmers. Scientists are trying, with limited means, to concentrate and conserve biodiversity in very small spaces, called, coconut gene banks. Breeding and conservation in situ by farmers has created the extraordinary diversity of varieties and forms of today's coconut palm. However, farmers' selection methods are often ineffective in the short term. We will see why during this training. If scientists and farmers work together, a small improvement in farmers' practices can yield huge progress in coconut conservation. This is the main reason why we conceived this training. The cogent global strategy was prepared in 2013. In October, the complete draft of the first three chapters was sent to Bioversity, Introduction, where we are now, and where we need to be. It was then reviewed by a panel of three international reviewers and three more from Bioversity. In November 2013, after integrating their comments, the text was ready. The publication of these three chapters was then delayed by five years, until 2018. The draft of Chapter 4, our plan for the next decade, has been submitted since the beginning of 2014. It is still to be published in 2023. We created 434 interactions, that means people publishing a section together, among about 90 authors from more than 20 countries. Cogent and all contributors agreed to the content of the strategy. Last global updating of the database was conducted in 2012 in the framework of the project, Upgrading Gene Banks, funded by the Trust. The present global system, based on five international gene banks and 19 national gene banks, has not been fully efficient in terms of both quality of conservation and germplasm sharing. Some national gene bank, for instance Philippines, Sri Lanka, ensure better quality conservation and exchange or supply more varieties than three of the international gene banks. Presently some varieties are conserved in more than 15 countries, including all the international gene banks, and some other varieties are conserved in one gene bank only. So, the main recommendations were, first, doubling the number of international gene banks. Second, set up a triplication system. For a given cultivar, no more than three accessions located in three distinct countries will be funded by the international system. In the future, it has been envisioned that any national gene bank ensuring the required level of quality of conservation and succeeding in placing part of its germplasm under international mandate could get the status of international coconut gene bank. The ambitious proposal of a strategy is to attribute crucial and central importance to the database on coconut genetic resources. International funding would depend on the quality of data provided by countries, and what this data indicates about the quality of their accessions. This system is suitable for a networked collection. It does not apply to large single conservation centers, one per species and under international mandate, which are funded by the Global Trust. That is why he is not in the habit of thought of the trust. An endowment fund was proposed to be USD 500,000 per year. Upon obtaining funding, 
part of this fund will be directly shared on a cultivar accession basis at the rate of 200 United States dollars per accession per year after arbitration based on the database contents and conducted within the cogent network on the possible following basis for a cultivar no more than three accessions located in three countries will be funded by the international system funding will concern only accessions with well filled and reliable data number of living palms updated yearly Funding will prioritize quality accessions in gene banks who effectively transferred this germplasm to other countries during the past 20 years. Accession-based funding will be reduced for countries which are not able to conduct efficient hand-controlled pollination for ensuring reliable international transfer and rejuvenation. At the beginning, because of low number of accessions reaching the quality standards, the totality endowment fund will not be released to gene bank. I will serve to create the database, to train researchers to the use of the database, to upgrade technical capability of gene banks and for germplasm transfers progressively as the quality will increase more and more funding will be released to gene banks on an accession basis please note that decisions on this subject should not be taken only by the current international gene banks which may have different interests from those of the entire network this slide schematizes the different components of the conservation of the coconut palm there are ex situ conservation, either in the field or in the future by cryopreservation. Using cryopreservation techniques based on embryos, plumules or pollen carries certain constraints. It does not allow reproducing and thus multiplying a genotype, but only the progeny of this genotype. For most allogamous tall type varieties conserved ex situ, embryos will have to be obtained by controlled pollination with bagging and this have will a very high cost. In situ conservation occupies a central place in the diagram. If scientists and farmers manage to work together, this will greatly increase the effectiveness of conservation. Finally, the polymotu concept, which consists in planting coconut palms in geographic and reproductive insulation, could serve as an alternative for conservation. In classical coconut ex situ gene banks, coconut cultivars are conserved as accessions, generally planted close together in the same fields. For reproducing accessions in ex situ gene banks, the technique of controlled pollination with bagging of the inflorescence is used. For coconuts, this technique is very costly. The lifespan of such accessions is only 25 to 30 years. After this period, most non-dwarf coconut varieties reach 15 meters high or more. At this stage, it becomes difficult to climb the palms. It is therefore necessary to rejuvenate the accessions before the inflorescences become inaccessible. In the Côte d'Ivoire African Gene Bank, workers use costly triple ladders that can reach a height of only 14 meters. In many other places, palms are climbed mainly manually, which is risky. Rejuvenation programs require climbing roughly 75 palms each about 15 to 20 times. Production of the 200 seed nuts requested for the duplication of only accession will demand one and a half years preparation, and it will cost more than 1,600 United States dollars in a context of low salaries in Africa. Only scientists with healthy research budgets can afford to order varieties from classical ex situ coconut gene banks. Almost all farmers cannot afford this. Alternatively, the coconut palms could be planted in geographical and reproductive isolation, as it has been done by Polynesians and, more recently, by some Thai people. For instance, when a small, isolated island is planted with one variety only of coconut palm, breeding occurs only within this variety, and certified seed nuts are naturally produced for farmers. In this way, the constraints linked to the heights and ages of the palms are removed. Instead of climbing the palms for making controlled pollination, people only have to wait for the coconut to fall naturally to the ground. Open pollination will provide true to type and cheap seed nuts. Thus, the same accession can be kept as long as a sufficient number of palms remain alive in the field. In most cases, the duration of a coconut accession will then be extended to 75 to 100 years. Even if some of the palms die, there is no need to remove the remainder, as is done in a classical gene bank. 
dead palms can be replaced by new ones without removing the old palms remaining alive. Extending the lifespan of a coconut accession from 25 to 30 years to 75 to 100 years represents a huge saving of time, manpower and money. The creation of attractive catalogues that allow the identification of varieties and forms is a crucial step for the in situ conservation, dissemination and even marketing of coconut varieties. At the beginning, the first catalogues we produced had a fairly rigid structure with systematically a page of text and a page of six standardized photos to describe each variety. Here is a prospective diagram on the evolution of the number of varieties and populations conserved ex situ. You may know that coconut nomenclature includes varieties and populations within varieties. Time is too short to explain it in detail. When I first presented this diagram, some people told me that it was too ambitious. In fact, the exchanges I had afterwards seem to indicate that the overall number of populations collected around the world is much higher. Researchers continued to collect a lot. They often collected varieties with low numbers, because some interesting varieties and forms are represented by less than five individuals. On the other hand, no work has been done since 2012 at the global level to try to detect and remove duplicates. Moreover, the majority of collections have no means of reproducing accessions true to type. Many accessions are therefore active for at best 50 years, then they disappear or are mixed up. Since there has been no detailed follow-up since 2012, we are getting into a situation of clutter. We no longer know at the global level what has been collected, what is duplicated, what has disappeared, and what has been regenerated, and whether this regeneration was carried out reliably. Dear participants and colleagues, thank you for listening, and do not forget to visit our website.